No, I can't. It's just, um, it's playoff basketball. You have two really competitive teams going at it. Um, and, uh, you know, laying it on, out on the line and uh, there's just adversity going <laughs> on both sides just constantly. And, you know, the, the competition is that intense that, uh, you know, it's creating that adversity. Um, I do not have any updates on anybody. Like we're just going to go back to our caves, <laughs> our cave and just recoup and maybe I'll have some information for you tomorrow. So to that point, is Jimmy going to need another MRI? No. No. And but I don't have any other uh, update on him. And specific to Tyler, we saw he had a wrap around. Uh, yeah, um, I, I don't have information on that right now. Um, but look, we're, we just got guys grinding, gotten through, you know, uh, this is what the playoffs is all about. Did you hold Tyler out because of the injury or, or did you go with Vic for as a coaching decision? Um, a little bit of both, you know, he, he felt something, uh, I didn't even really get the extent of it. It was so loud in there. Um, you know, so uh, I just went with Vic and it was Tyler's time to come out for a quick rest anyway. And then we just went with it. 22 shots is a career high for Bam in a postseason game or otherwise. I mean, you've often said games like this aren't always what you need from him, but tonight was it what you needed? And did you see it coming in any way? Yeah, him? he did his version of what Jimmy does in terms of do what's necessary for the game, you know, and he was extremely ass assertive. Uh, it happened in a lot of moments that were fully in the context of how we want to play. Uh, he was just way more assertive on the catch and, and those moments in between. Uh, and it wasn't just the scoring. That's what everybody else, everybody's going to uh, recognize, but he did so many things in terms of getting us organized, facilitating, playing point guard for us uh, at times, uh, running offense, you know, in the post through him uh, and then defending like he always does, you know, one through five against uh, a team that presents, you know, a lot of challenges. Given the circumstances, have you ever seen Bam play better? Um, yeah, I've, I've seen him play, you know, great basketball uh, in the playoffs. I, I really have. He's, he's a winning player. Uh, and, you know, he, he really is uh, the heart and soul uh, of our group. Um, you, you know, you can count on him uh, all the time. He doesn't get caught up in all the noise and everything. He's just out there competing. Uh, playing winning basketball, um, doing it on both ends and doing what is necessary. And tonight we needed the scoring and we needed that kind of that offensive punch early on. Um, and again, it was like uh, just on the catch, he was just a, a lot more assertive. Uh, and then when Jimmy was out in the second half, he just stabilized us. Uh, you know, it got, it got a little bit gnarly out there. And uh, when it did, we were able to get the ball to Bam and, and, and just get something coherent. Eric, you've talked about the swings in these series from game to game and maybe even quarter to quarter. What has your experience over the years taught you about handling the, those wild emotions and, and trying to find just a, a good space between games? Uh, yeah, you just you have to you have to stay present as much as possible. Uh, you know, in both buildings, uh, the noise gets extremely loud. Uh, we have guys that wear all their emotions on their sleeves. <laughs> you know, we have uh, great competitors. Um, so that's going to bring out everything, you know, especially when you're playing against a great basketball team, it's going to bring out, you know, the best in you, hopefully it's going to bring out uh, the anger in you. Sometimes it's going to bring out frustration. It's going to bring out uh, disappointment. It's going to bring out everything in between, uh, but you have to stay present, you know, and, and, and try to uh, win the next possession. Um, and, you know, that's gonna be the case throughout this series. Eric, excuse me, in hindsight, um, what, what most explained the start that you guys had? And they haven't been happy with their starts a lot in the postseason. Has that been a point of emphasis to, you know, I mean, you no, I, jump on everybody, but particularly- Look, uh, you have two really good defensive teams. Okay, uh, the first game, 
they gave up the most points they've given up in the playoffs this year. Second game we gave up the most we've given up all year long, including the playoffs. So they were extremely angry and disappointed after giving up 118. And our guys you know, aren't used to giving up 127. So we knew we had to establish, you know, a defensive mindset. And um, we were able to do that, you know, from the beginning. But then also we were able to be efficient offensively, which which helps. That just kind of fuels your, uh, your defensive efforts. Um, but the, you have two really competitive teams. Um, and the margin for error on either side is not, it's so small that uh, you just got to, you got to stay the course through all the emotions and, and the ups and downs. So we talked a lot about Max the last couple of weeks and how much confidence the group has in him. What does it say about him to be able in that moment late in the game to hit that kind of shot? Yeah, it was a big shot. Uh, and, you know, we wanted him to be assertive. He, he offers a different kind of menu, you know, to our offense. Um, you know, so we were going to Bam in the post, going to him with the elbows, uh, you know, running our normal pick and roll basketball. But we want to access, you know, different parts of our menu. And, and Max and Duncan, Tyler, they, they provide a different part of our menu. And that was really uh, important. Even the triggers he was creating throughout the course of the game. Um, but, you know, he's uh, he's fearless. So even in a moment like that, like, you know, he thinks he thinks the whole play is being run for him. Uh, and you just you appreciate that kind of confidence. I will take one from Zoom. Anthony Chiang, go ahead. Hey, Spill. Um, re regarding Vic, he didn't play in the first half, but just in the second half, how important was his on ball defense just to help fill some of the void left behind at that end by Jimmy? Yeah, I, I think everything about it. You know, it, it just speaks to his competitive character. That was not easy. You know, we went with a slightly different rotation because Kyle came back. You know, that is going to force some changes throughout the, the rotation. So he didn't play in the first half. Uh, you know, we've had so many guys that have had to take on different roles uh, and sacrifice. You know, we say it's always easy to sacrifice when it's not you're the when you're not the one doing it. Um, and he's had to sacrifice, you know, many times. And, uh, you know, that wasn't easy. That wasn't necessarily the way we were gonna, going to go the first half. It just, things were going really well. We just kept going with that. Uh, and then all of a sudden, boom, you have somebody that's, Jimmy can't, is not going to go in the second half. And then him to be stable enough and not be frustrated and not be rolling his eyes and like, oh, okay, now I get an opportunity. He's just, he's just steady, stays the course. Uh, he's made himself available, made himself vulnerable through this whole process. He's prepared behind the scenes uh, and his, his, uh, his minutes in, in the second half were, were so important defensively, um, you know, against uh, their two studs. Um, and then offensively, he just gave us, you know, a facsimile of a lot of the stuff that we do at Jimmy. And I mean that as the ultimate compliment. Did you think that Jimmy <clears throat> wasn't moving well in the first half, like just with eyeballs, what you saw from him? Yeah, he didn't have his, uh, like, you know, normal explosive burst. Um, you know, he's been able to manage, you know, this and – I think this uh, the next two days will be really important, obviously. Um, but he's he's a great competitor, you know. So even when he's out there, he was able to be efficient and he was able to defend. Uh, his competitiveness will overtake everything, and he's going to put it all, all out there. And um, at halftime, really, the trainers, you know, made the call. Um, you know, I just feel like we've been in this situation a lot with with a few of our guys. We almost have to restrain them, you know, and. Uh, we get it and we, we love it uh, about them, how they're wired, um, but we also don't want to be irresponsible. So following up on exactly that, you guys have had plenty of experience with it, but if Jimmy has to miss a game. I, I don't even want to go there yet, Nick. Like, what, what, what would change the most? I don't know. Him? Like, let me, let me get back to our cave and assess. Like, I literally haven't even had a chance to talk to our trainers and – then I'm getting cursed out if I talk to our trainers in front of our players. Like it's that's that's why we love love the guys in the locker room.
Okay, thank you.